Well, lots of factors are affecting energy demand in the next 20 years. Predicting it, though, uh, is a more skillful job. With me to talk more about it is BP's chief economist, Spencer Dale. Spencer, good to see you. Hi. Um, wh what are the key findings of uh, this year's BP Energy Outlook? The point of the Energy Outlook is to try to summarise today what are the key forces and driving factors which are shaping energy markets over the next 20 years? And I think three key messages coming out of this year's outlook. First, that energy demand will continue to rise. And that's simply because the world economy continues to grow. And as it grows, it needs more energy to fuel those high levels of activity. Second, the fuel mix, the mix of fuels driving the world economy is likely to shift. Strong growth in, in gas, very rapid growth in renewables like um, solar and wind, but a sharp slowing in the growth for coal. And third, um, the growth rate of carbon emissions from energy likely to, to slow very sharply as we use energy more efficiently and we move towards lower carbon fuels. The oil market is, as many people know, in a current state of weakness. Will it recover? And if so, how will it recover over the next 20 years? Yeah, so one of the joys of doing the energy outlook is we get a chance to, to not focus on the sort of the here and now and we get a look at some of these longer term forces. But I think there's clear signs that the market is gradually adjusting um, and, and working through its current period of weakness. What will drive the growing demand for energy? The, the demand for energy will grow over the next 20 years quite simply because we expect the world economy to continue to grow over the next 20 years and as the world economy expands it needs more energy to fuel those high levels of activity. China is a hugely important uh, market for, for, for global energy. It's the world's biggest market for energy, the biggest consumer of energy and it's been the biggest growth market for energy. But China's energy needs are changing. Its economy is likely to grow less quickly going forward so it will need a slower growth in energy demand. Secondly, the economy is shifting away from heavy manufacturing, heavy industrialization, which is very energy intensive, towards more service sector orientated growth, more consumer facing growth. And also China is trying to change its mix of fuels, reducing its reliance on coal. And that will also change the, the types of, of energy that China will consume. Talking globally, how will the fuel mix change over the outlook? So strong growth in gas, gas becoming the fastest growing uh, fossil fuel, um, very rapid growth in renewables, particular solar power and, and wind power, but coal slowing very sharply over the next 20 years. Oil and gas still seem in the next 20 years to be the sort of dominant force. Why do you think that is? That demand for oil is coming from developing emerging economies. We expect the number of vehicles on our planet to more than double over the next 20 years and that is a key driver for increasing in oil. Big increases in the supply of gas means gas remains very competitive. In addition to that, increasing environmental regulation, encouraging a switch into lower carbon uh, fuels, allow gas to gradually gain share away from coal, particularly in the power sector, both within emerging economies, but also within developed economies like the EU and the US as well. What type of gas are we talking? Natural gas, shale gas? So the US shale revolution, you, you see it both in terms of tight oil and, and shale gas, and we see both of those continuing um, to, to grow. We expect US tight oil to continue to grow over the next 20 years, but at a slower rate um, than seen over the sort of rapid periods over the last uh, four or five years. And that's just because the resource base for tight oil it will become an increasing constraint. For US shale gas, the resources look far bigger based on current estimates. And so we see rapid growth of, of, of US shale gas over the next 20 years, pretty much throughout that, that period of time. So US shale gas becoming increasingly important in terms of as a global supply of gas. Will renewables continue to grow? Do you see growth there? We expect renewables to grow very rapidly over the next 20 years, particularly strong growth in solar energy and also in wind power. And that's helped by the cost of these renewable fuels are coming down and allowing them to increasingly compete, particularly within the power sector. What of coal? How could that impact on things? So we expect coal, um, the growth of coal to slow sharply over the next 20 years. Some of that reflects the fact that China's demand for coal, which in the past has been the key driver of coal demand, is likely to slow sharply. And also across the world, we're seeing coal lose share relative to gas and, 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 and non-fossil fuels in, the, in response to sort of environmental regulations, encouraging this switch to a lower carbon environment. 
What's the yeah. outlook for carbon emissions? So we expect the growth of carbon emissions from energy to more than half over the next 20 years compared to the last 20 years. And that reflects two key factors. First, as the economy grows, we, we expect the economy to become increasingly more and more energy efficient. So you need less growth in energy to drive that growth. And moreover, this shift in the fuel mix towards lower carbon fuels means that, that also helps to drive down this rate of growth in, in, in carbon emissions. What other uncertainties are there in terms of predicting the next 20 years? Well, let's suppose China's growth actually slows down more quickly than we expect. So uh, that slower global GDP growth, which would stem from that, would mean that you see quite a slowdown in the, in the growth of energy demand. So crudely, rough, um, around a third of the growth we expect to see in energy demand in our base case wouldn't materialise in this slower GDP growth world. We mentioned global GDP and how that affects things. What, what other uncertainties are there? Carbon emissions are still rising, um, suggesting the need that we may need to see more, even more policy action to try and move to a lower carbon environment. And so one possibility is we have a faster transition to a lower carbon environment. In that world, a number of things are likely to happen. The growth of, of energy demand is likely to slow overall because energy becomes more expensive. You're also likely to see quite a significant shift in the nature of fuels away from fossil fuels, the more carbon intensive fuels, towards non-fossil fuels which don't have that, that carbon intensity. What about the uncertainties of shale? Do they become certainties over the next 20 years? No, I'm sure they won't become certainties and we've been consistently surprised by the strength and growth of, of shale, both in terms of US shale gas and US um, tight oil. And so shale gas in, in, the, in that sort of alternative case, rather than accounting for around 25% of global supplies, accounts for almost a third of global supplies by 2035 and so what you're seeing is in some sense a shift with unconventional gas becoming more and more important and in part crowding out more conventional types of gas. Okay for now Spencer thank you very much. Well that's how it's looking for the next 20 years and as long as the world economy continues to grow it looks like demand for energy will grow with it. For now though goodbye.